welcome back to the channel. Welcome to Costa del Camas in southeast Northumberland. It's quite a changeable morning, isn't it? Yep, it is. It's uh, it's nice though. It's uh, it's a bit of cloud cover. Sun's trying to break through there, but hopefully it stays a bit cloud cover because it'll be beneficial here. I think. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. Conditions are good. They it's are. A nice little bit of surf behind with there, so yeah, I'm quite hopeful of you. I am. Yeah, yeah. I am. I think. Yeah. It's very. It's one of those mornings where there's a little bit of sea. It's probably two, two and a half foot swell. Do you think? Yeah. There's I'll no like wind, so it's smooth. As Gary says it's, it's cloudy. We might get hit with a little bit of rain. Looking at some of the, looking at the horizon, but you never know. And the sea looks like it could potentially accommodate various species, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, looking at that. Um, I would say without a shadow of it, I mean, you, you're definitely going to hopefully get a flounder or something here, but with a little bit of surf like that, I think, you know, you've got a good chance of a bass, early bass here, mm -hmm. you know, who knows, there's, there's everything, yeah. really. What um, what rigs are you going for today? Rigs, just really, really simple stuff. Of, uh, um, it's just a two-hook flapper, basic, um, uh, size one hooks, basically, just toned everything right down. Yeah. And I've just rod-wise and that, we've just got the Flatty Fanatics out, really, haven't we? So it's just really, really light. And yeah. just flicking it in just at the back of the surf, really, and just seeing if there's anybody, or sorry, anything there. Yeah, yeah. And leads, we've both gone for watch leads, haven't we? Yeah. They're great. For, I mean, even with a little bit of sea, there's still a bit of pull, isn't there, right? Yeah. Uh, well, it's, I've just looked now at yeah. the rods from even just doing this, it's just savagely started to pull it to the right. Yeah, <laughs> it's strange because there must be a bit of an eddy. There's a lovely yeah. hole in front of us here. And with the tide flooding from the north, I don't know if it's hitting a shallower bank out there, then creating an eddy and actually pushing the gear this way. Although, seeing that, yeah. all of a sudden now there's a bit more depth. The tide started to pull that way, so we're going to have to cast up yeah. tide a little bit that way. Yeah. Anything? I don't know. You know, nice one. one. Well done. Save the blank. Pump little flounder, so quite pleased with that. Hopefully, it's the start of a few more to come. So, it's nicely hooked this one. Obviously, he's going to go back anyway, but let's get this one back. He's off. So, in terms of the gear we're using today, it's actually quite a nice novelty to just not walk very far with light gear isn't it yeah it is it's you know i do like i really do like a bit of light rod fishing like this you know it's it's really nice just easy isn't it it is it is because god knows we've had a fair share last weekend <laughs> oh, with the euros yeah, that was challenging but yeah. logging boxes of kit beach shelter spare rods get downs on the cliffs so yeah none of that yeah no, no. we haven't fished in northumberland beach for i can't i can't even remember can't remember. It might have been the last time you were a sea trout, actually. Yeah. It was uh, early last year, wasn't it? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's yeah, it's really nice to get out. We're mm. not, for once, we're not that far from home. Um, yeah, that's a bonus. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's probably what 15, 20 minutes for me yeah. and half an hour max yeah, for you. Absolutely. So, yeah. But we've gone old school today on the gear front. We've both got our trusty classic Coniflex Flatty Fanatics out. I've even gone Abu. Six and a half thousand green margalites. That's what I used to fish when I was a kid, but well before braid came in. That's just loaded with thin 14 pound, I think it's 0 0.31 Sakuma line. And yeah, it's great, it's really enjoyable. You were actually uh, you were actually fishing last year next to the guy who was uh, involved in making these. Oh, back yeah, the um, oh, yeah. Joke, yeah. 
So where, where were we before we got rudely interrupted by a wave? <laughs> I think uh, you were saying you'd... Bait just really gone there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were fishing next to a guy who, was, who made those yeah, was many, down, many years ago. Down, um, doing a bit of a hound session, and uh, Bob Gascoigne come down. So I had a bit of crap with Bob, great bloke, and uh, telling us some of the old stories of the olden days when uh, he had some involvement with the making of these fanatics. Fascinating listening, you know, really interesting stuff, yeah. yeah. Well, they did a good job, I mean, they stood the test of time. They're, uh, they're way next to nothing, and they've got, they've got cracking tips on them. And then about, I don't know, two thirds of the way up, you, they, they do have a lot of backbone for oh, a light yeah, yeah. rod. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can uh, just flick them, can't you? But if you really want to thump one, and you, you know, yeah. I mean, you proved that last year, didn't you? When uh, when you had the hounds on them, uh, they're true. super light, really, true. really thin braid, and yeah. you, you were hitting them as almost as far as I was hitting with the beach caster, you know? You can't, so, you, yeah. yeah, yeah, you can. They've, they've got enough power to send a, a three, four ounce lead a, a, a good, good distance, definitely. So, well, that's the setup, that's the conditions. Let's see if we can get some fish. Absolutely. Yep, thanks for that. Had a bite. So David's into a fish. Looks like for some reason we're just getting to this stage of the tide. And we're both into fish straight away here, so fingers crossed. Bad fish, it's like pulling. Big it's a bass or a sea trout. Big flat in the It's a bass, isn't it? Look at that, look at that. Just hooked, just in the mouth. Look at that, beauty. It's an absolute beauty. It's a lively. <laughs> powerful, powerful fish that. Oh yeah, look at that. That must be what, easy four. Yeah. Got a canny set of teeth in there, they're, they're sharp those. He was giving us some really good lunges as well. Absolutely fantastic, get in. David's just reviving this fish now. Just what a fish, what a fish. Boom, well done. Oh, that's made a smile. I am absolutely buzzing with that. That was just on simple bit, mackerel strip belly. Couple of, I think they're maybe size one O's on a panel. Gave us a crack and bite. I knew it was a good fish when it was in the surf. It was re I'm using mono and I could still feel the lunges. So you do get sea trout at this time of year, obviously. And that I wasn't. Ex if we saw one, I wasn't expecting it to be that size. That must have been easy four. Got oh, easy, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. yeah, powerful fish. Uh, powerful fish. Really pleased with that. So let's get some fresh bait on. A lot of pull now, this tide's in full flow. Yeah, but we might have to start casting up tide a little bit and just letting it pull around. Do love fishing with this old kit. <clears throat> not, a, not a powerful reel, doesn't have a big gearbox and a fast retrieve, but for this sort of fishing, just light beach fishing, I think it's great. Just love using a multiplier, just 
kind of remind us of my childhood, I suppose. I think I'll get that rag changed. It's been out a few casts yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, it's looking a bit sorry for itself. Definitely needs a new bit of bait. These are the watch leads we're using. I think they're, I think mine's, yeah, four ounce. Cracking bits of kit for light surf work like this. Do actually give you a bit of grip and they're easy enough to pull out once, once you get them moving. Gary's just had quite a nice bite on his rod there. It's like something that just snatched it, hasn't it? Yeah. Just bounced back a little bit there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yep, yep. You got him? I think so. Yeah. Feels like a flatty. Is it? The beauty of these watch leads as well, I think, you know, they dig into the sand, which is really good to try and hold bottom. But you haven't got the grip wires, so half the time, you know, when you think you're fishing open beaches like this, when you're pulling grip wires through the sand, and you think, oh, is that a good fish? And then all of a sudden it comes free, and it's, ooh, not so good after all. But with a watch lead, you almost get that grip. Yeah, but you get a nice fight off the fish as well, because you're not dragging all your wires everywhere. Yep, just found it. Little small flounder. Yeah, nice one. On the mackerel strip. On the mackerel strip, yeah. Interesting, really, yeah, because I know last year when we had um, myself and David were fishing, and I was fishing mackerel strip and uh, rag, lots of flounders, and nearly all of them come on the mackerel strip. So there you go. Little flounder and out. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Can't ask for better than that no. with flatty, can you? There you are. Nice one. Yeah, let's get this little fella back. What we're doing as well, as I was saying before, we're only fishing <coughs> probably within 50, 60 yards, because quite often on these beaches up here, when you've got a little bit of surf, you cast too far, you just cast into no man's land. There's just, there's nothing there. The sea's a little bit calmer. If you keep your gear in and amongst the surf, either in it or maybe just behind the breakers, that's nine times out of 10 where, where all the action is. And because of that, unless you're fishing in a really heavy sea, days like this, conditions like this, you can get away with using this light gear and it's, it is a pleasure to fish with. There is still a bit of pull, but that little bit of movement, I, I think, is actually quite a good thing. Don't don't mind that at all, do we? No, I mean, you want movement, really, anyway, don't you? You don't want it to be totally devoid of anything, but just enough. I mean, I think it's... We're just holding ground, really, aren't we? It's not bad at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And with, with it being a shallow beach like this, anyway, it, it's nothing just to quickly bring in, if you bounce yourself around and just reset yourself. Well, oh, Gary's got a very small flatty there. We're gonna fish this mark now for about two and a half hours. And we're gonna we decide to move further along to the mouth. That's a big one. Why thank you. <laughs> Just gonna gate crash David here. <laughs> the world's biggest flounder. <laughs> I've got a tiny bit of weight on this, although it's just gone. Yeah, see something out there. That's not a bad, not a bad one that. I thought I could feel some weight there. That is a proper plump winter flounder. That. Gary, Gary, it's your nice fish. It's one of the best flounders I've had in a while. That not that I catch many flounders, I have to say, but he's absolutely demolished that rag bait. Nice. Don't know if you can see that. Very thick fish, so. We'll get him unhooked, get him back. I think we still might have a little move along to the mouth of the um, estuary here, but we'll see. Happy with that, we'll get him back. So he, he take another other hook, but it wasn't deep, just to scourge them, his gills are intact, so we'll get him back. Yep, there he goes. 
Right, well, we've had a few fish out of that hole, but tide's pushed in enough now where we think the mouth of the estuary's got yeah. to be worth a shot. Yeah. Just down there, what? 300 yards, really? Yeah. But, yeah, we know that's a deep channel there. So we're going to just lob a couple of baits in there and just see if there's anything about you. Yeah. yeah. laying the hook into the meat side and then just concentrating the majority of the binding around the knot and that's that's really secure as it is we'll about to get interrupted here we're all right one two three just nick that in through the through the skin of the fish as well just so it's firm just pull that tight and there we go Right, I think what I'm going to do is Gary's is a bit further over to the left. First cast. You can hopefully see in the camera here, there's the breakers on the shore, and then there's another wave, I don't know, 50, 60 yards. And I know that the channel runs in here, so I'm just going to plonk it in that little gut. Just in there. And hopefully, we can entice another fish out. Nothing happens there, next cast. We'll go a little bit further at the left into the mouth of the estuary. Yep, yeah, Gary's just had a decent knock here. And there's another flatfish, another That's flounder. That's quite a nice one, yeah, that. Yeah, it's all right, it's nice and hooked as well. Yeah, yeah. just so hooking I've up. I've seen a little rattle before, but using braid when you've got a little bit of a surf like this, sometimes you'll be very deceiving, but yeah. Yeah, yeah nice fish. Yeah. Nice chunky flounder, that, isn't it? Yeah, nice. On the mackerel? On the mackerel again. No, oh, look at that. Out straight Perfect. Away. Let's get, get him back. Straight back. Right, second cast. What I'm going to do, we've just spotted a seal cruising around before, which is not ideal, but. I didn't have a touch on the first chuck here, so I'm just going to put it a little bit further than what I did when I had it before. Right, happy with that. Still picking up the odd flounder. Gary's just had another nice one there. We're still putting the rag on because we're hoping we might hit a bass. Wishful thinking in the middle of March, of course, but you never know. Lovely conditions for them. Gary's tucking in to his old faithful exhibit ape. Pork pie, is it? Pork pie. Staple die at the cornerstone of any fishing session now. It's the first thing that goes in my box when I pack. <laughs> Pork pies, then everything else follows after that. <laughs> Go and investigate. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> Definitely had a couple of taps on this rod. <coughs> had a couple of knocks on this, but... Could be another flounder. It's not, it's not kicking like a bass or a sea trout. It's even better than weed. Hey, if you get another one, you can keep that. You've got yeah, a pair. There's a pair there. I just need to dry them. There so that are. is what's known as a lesser spotted <laughs> medium weight hiking sock. Yep. And it's just taken the top hook 
Yeah. Fact, Surprising, uh, really, isn't it? Because Rogram. the socks in the Northumberland course normally take mackerel strips. They do, aye, yeah. aye. Yeah. And uh, it actually, I, I knew I'd seen a couple of taps. Yeah, that yeah. Bite. You usually get quite aggressive bites off these, but they were very fickle. So, yeah. anyway, yeah. as you can see, it's it's just ankle hooked. So, um, go back nice, that, we'll yeah. Get it back. Get it back. And she's away. <laughs> right, <sighs> we've just decided what we're going to do is because we're getting nothing here we're gonna just get over there and just have a chuck straight into the channel just as a last, last ditch attempt it's a little bit of weight on this actually but what we will sort of find though is the tide ebbs is that any you know weed or whatever that the, the river's pulling out will we might start to catch it up there he's got himself a fish there. I wonder how long that's been lying on. I've got a little bit of weight on here as well, mine, but could be another one of those hiking socks. Snap. <laughs> <laughs> so just as we're seeing the bites are dried up, we've got a rather nicely marked one, but Gary's is a lot more interesting. Small fish, very small fish, but it's also marked up on the other side like that. It's a strange looking fish. It, it is, isn't it? It's almost like it started the process of yeah. being a double side and then for whatever reason it stopped, or unless it's part way through the process, but yeah. oh, fascinating that. Just... Right, well, we'll get these unhooked. I think yeah. we'll still have a little cast into that channel just in case but another couple of fish to add to what's been a pretty productive day actually especially for mid-march which is always tricky so yeah we'll keep going see what uh, see what else we can get so gary's just putting his fish back i'm just gonna do the same hopefully you can see that and away right so just decided to literally flick the baits out into the channel just to see if we can intercept anything that's swimming out. Well, we're both saying we've not much happening here, although I do have some weight on this actually. That was just casting literally straight into the channel, but of course it could be a bit of weed. There's definitely something going on. So we're going to go back further along the beach. Because to be honest, other than a couple of flatties, this area hasn't really produced anything. So we'll fish a little bit of the... A little bit of the ebb. Just on the off chance we can pick something else up as the tide starts to flow again, but that comes with the territory when you cast into the channel of an estuary. Fortunately, it's not too bad. And because I've barely had any sleep, those baits are just gonna go straight back out because I'm starting to feel very lazy and lethargic. So for any... Um, Tyneside or Northumberland anglers watching this. I don't know if you can see along here, just to the left of these two people, there's an old sort of concrete structure. I've driven past it for years. You can see it from the road. I've never, never thought anything of it. I just thought it was something to do with fishing. One of the locals wandered over earlier and we had a bit crack and he was saying that used to be before the main spine road, which is the A189 from kind of North Tyneside up to South East Northumberland. You see, in prior to the construction of that road, that was an old um, chine ferry. Um, and apparently a chine ferry is where you sit in it and there's just like a pulley on a rope. And that's how they used to be able to get across the Wandsbeck, which is this river here. So I thought that was quite interesting. Nice. Well, we've come full circle. Just thought I'd get that one in there. And we're back to where we started, albeit it's uh, high water now. We've tried further along towards the mouth, had a couple of flatties. 
nothing. So we've come back to where we started and we're hopefully gonna cast into that nice big hole that we fished into this morning and next to, just in case there's anything there. So we'll probably have another, I don't know, hour or so into the flood, into the ebb, sorry. See if we can pull something out. It does look very bassy, so you never know. Yeah, definitely saw a couple of touches there, like. Some weight on that, is it? Yeah, it feels. Oh yeah. I hope it's not one of the, another one of them Northumberland socks. <laughs> oh yeah, decent one that. Very, very light in colour. Oh, you got two. Best of the day, that I would say. Yeah. Nice fish. Yeah, some nice orange spots on it as well, aren't there? Yeah. Apparently I found out, if, tell if it's a slammer, if you run up the back one, you, you can feel the spikes coming back on yourself. Right. That's the apparently the telltale sign. Yeah. Yeah, that's good a, one, that. That's yeah. a really nice one. Best yeah. of the day, that. Yeah. Pleased with them. Double shot like that. So both agree that this one... Yeah. ...deserves a... Bit of a measure. A bit of a measure. It's a nice slammer, that. It is. Very, very pleased with that. Much uh, yeah. lighter in colour than the others as well, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's... Uh, Let's see what it uh, what it measures out of interest then. Oh, that is just got forty two. Just yeah. grip forty two. Yeah, nice one. Let's get this. Let's get, him get back. this lovely fish back. Just get right in these. And he's gone. And he's away. The Lexa set. <laughs> Didn't get any chance to uh, film him there. Right, well typically as I turn the camera off, I've just wound in uh -huh. and although he's a little fella, he's another species because I've just had, first one I've had in a while, tiny little turbot. Really happy with that, he's just taken that mackerel strip, huge cavernous mouth for such a small fish but really really pretty little flatfish. So I'm going to get him get them unhooked and get them back but yeah as Gary was saying it's turned into a little bit of a species hole today which for middle of March is great well that brings us to the end of what's been quite a well, it's been all right, hasn't productive it? Yeah, session we had, we had a few yeah. fish haven't we yeah. nice sea trout which I was over the moon with I'm not going to lie Yeah, obviously fantastic. being a sea trout returned safely as you saw um, but yeah it's been it's been a really enjoyable session actually hasn't it yeah it's something quite nice you know like as i said previously in the in the video we've we haven't traveled far from home to get here it's just up the road yeah it's a nice sandy beach really easy fishing very pleasant place to be mm -hmm. and we've just had a little steady stream of fish coming through um, yeah. and obviously david's had that absolute magic sea trout so yeah mm -hmm. it's been fantastic it's, been, it's had have. a good time yeah we have we have it's been it's been really nice so i think we'll definitely do more of this sort of fishing as well yeah. when you know we do travel a lot don't we to go fishing and sometimes i think you overlook what's really on your doorstep sometimes and yeah yeah well so. especially this part of the world northumberland as well so yeah no it's been really good as always thanks very much for watching please uh, hit the like subscribe button and uh tight lines keep fishing and we'll see you on the next one <laughs>